Welcome to the Tube's Weekend Edition, where we take a second look at the stories that made our week. Let's do it! With me in the studio are the Tube's team, Shai Ringel and Yaron Tenbring. How was your week, boys? Great. We survived another week. Yes, we have. And you know, if your expectations are low, you always feel a deep, uh, a deep sense of achievement when the week ends. Here's a medal for surviving. And you, Thanks. Shai? I want the weekend. You want the weekend to continue? Okay, yeah. well, you are now in the weekend because yeah. this is the Tube's weekend edition. Let's start <laughs> the show. You know Tesla as that company that's trying to make the electric car into a cool and usable thing. But now Tesla is moving ahead to make clean energy itself. Well, cool. Tesla took the wraps off Tesla Energy, its ambitious battery system that can work for homes, businesses, and even utilities. With Powerwall, a home user can generate 10 kilowatts per hour of solar energy at the comfort of his home for $3,500. Check out a bit of Elon Musk's keynote speech before we get all electrified about it. So this is this little product we call the Tesla Powerwall. Um, and if you look back against that wall, you'll see a whole bunch of them as well in different colors. <laughs> so you can pick your favorite color. And it looks like a beautiful sculpture on the wall. So it's very important. I, mean, I want to point out a few things that, that are very important about this. Um, the fact that it's wall mounted is, is vital because it means you don't need to have a battery room. Okay? You don't have to have some room filled with nasty batteries. Uh, it means that a normal household can mount this uh, on, on their garage or on the outside wall of their house, um, and it doesn't take up any room. It's, it, I mean, it's flat against the wall. It, it has all of the integrated safety systems, the thermal controls, the DC to DC converter. It's designed to work very well with solar systems right out of the box. Yeah, Yaron, why is the tech world so excited about this? Is it a real breakthrough? Well, the technology itself is not a real breakthrough. I mean, batteries like this already exist. What we have here is really good branding. I mean, it's a product now. It's not just an idea with prototypes when, and with uh, some companies making, making th these kind of batteries for your home. This is a real product made by a real brand. Tesla is a very good brand. It's very popular, especially in the West Coast in the States. And the fact that Elon Musk is standing behind it is very significant because he has the power to market it uh, and bring it actually to millions of homes. Mm -hmm. uh, the fact that the technology exists does not mean that people are going to you know, do leaps and bounds to get it. But if it's easy to get and it's, it, it's going to be easy to get, and easy to install and connect to a solar panel on your roof, mm -hmm. then people, you'd, you'd see people flocking to buy it and you'd see some real impact on the, on the electricity grid that, as we're using it today. Yeah, I get the idea, but is it actually going to happen? Do you, can you imagine a true electric, uh, electric revolution or is it just another Elon Musk hype thing? It, it, it's a step. It's, it's a small step, mm -hmm. but it's a step. Uh, he'll need to uh, produce a lot of these batteries in order for it to be a real revolution and he will need to uh, get people to understand what the hell those batteries actually do. Uh, there is a good technology behind it. It's clean, it's safe, as Elon, if we believe Elon Musk, and it, it will learn uh, the way that the user uh, uses electricity in, in his home. This is the small revolution. If the battery will uh, be, uh, if the battery will be customized to my use, uh, this is something that I, as a consumer, will want in my home. Um, but if it will change the power grid, I, I don't know. It it needs time. A, lo a lot needs to happen. But you know, talking about Elon Musk hype. Mm -hmm. What Elon Musk is always hyping is the future. He's hyping space travel, he's hyping electrical cars, and now he's hy hyping clean energy. And I think, you know, it's a very good choice of things to hype. These are things that people really want. And actually, these are things that the planet really needs. Mm -hmm. 
so I'm not against uh, um, uh, his his projects being overhyped. I think. Yeah, yeah, but Elon Musk has a problem. He doesn't like to take baby steps, and this is exactly uh, where he needed to take a little baby steps and he's not willing to he wants to open a big factory to produce a lot of these batteries like he wanted to go to space and go to straight to mars and he wanted to bring tesla into a lot of homes in the united states and you know he doesn't like to take baby steps he loves big revolutions he always promised big revolutions and when you are promised big revolutions most of the time you won't believe it because you know, you don't have a lot of revolutions. Until it happens. Yeah, yeah until and, it happens. You know, one, one of them will happen. Yeah. He's quite ambitious. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay, let's move on. Consumer drones are apparently the next big market. DJI, the company behind the most popular consumer drone in the world, announced this week that it was raising $75 million in funding from Accel Partners, an investor in companies like Facebook and Dropbox, for an overall valuation of, wait for it, $10 billion. Dollars. Let's fly with DJI before we crash land on the big drone business. When DJI created the Inspire One, it was for the ones who were ready to fly. The creators who refused to be compromised by the ground. The people who simply said, I will soar. 3-axis stabilized 4K camera, precision flight controls, unobstructed 360 degree aerials the world's first professional flying camera that anyone can fly dji inspire one soar with creativity People like looking at things from all these different angles, don't they? Yeah, it's real drone porn, <laughs> it's isn't a, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's for the male uh, public mostly, I have a feeling. Uh, probably. Probably, to begin with. Okay, can a drone maker really be worth so much money, Yaron? I mean, if that's the valuation that people uh, invested in for, then yes, it can, apparently. Uh, if, it's, if it's inflated, yes, I think like most tech today, this valuation is inflated, it's too much. Uh, but we're talking here about very big manufacturer, a very popular one, I think number one in the consumer market indeed. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you look into the future of drones, uh, that is gonna mean a lot. I mean, the fact it's that you're number a, one. But for, for, the, for, the, uh, for a private person, it's still a toy. Yeah, it's a toy, it's a rich people's toy. It's something that a lot of people in Silicon Valley has and we don't and we are not gonna have our own drone for a very long time we'll see you know somewhere here somewhere there someone uh, owning a drone but uh, this valuation is inflated like it's it's sky high inflated it's it's unbelievable 10 billion dollars for a company that will not sell a lot of these drones it will not be for the mass uh, uh, mass consumer uh, market and uh, you know uh, but, but but it's a symbol like dji uh, has when you think about drones you think about dji drone because it it, it looks this is uh, what uh, people recognize these days the drone by uh, cji dji that for uh, arms drone uh, white and uh, you know uh, uh, it it got sexy. a lot of yeah it's it looks sexy it got a lot of attention no, in it, pop it, culture um, it looks Lovely. It yeah. looks fine, but still, I can. If I'm trying to imagine, what are the purposes? Well, you, you can see the, the early adopters of drone technology, of small drones, of consumer drones, are uh, one journalists and activists. Mm -hmm. We've, uh, we've, uh, I've seen people using it now in Tel Aviv uh, during the uh, demonstrations of uh, uh, Jewish Ethiopians. It's, it's good for journalism. Uh, and a lot of people, uh, like in the art field, are starting to use it because you can get amazing shots mm -hmm. for uh, a really low sum of money. And, uh, you know, indeed, people with money, you treat it as a kind of toy, a hobby. Uh, but I think eventually uh, drones are going to become much cheaper and you could buy one to your nephew or, 
you know, as a, as a Christmas gift. It, uh, it will take a lot of time because what are you going to do with that drone? Like the cameras on that on this specific drones are expensive yeah, enough expensive. without the drone. We're imagining a future where everything will be cheaper and new things will be the expensive things. Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's move on. Just ahead of its expected relaunch next month of uh, the Beat Music streaming uh, service, Apple is pushing labels to choke off free streaming options at competitors like Spotify and YouTube, according to The Verge. Apple acquired the Beats Music service last year in a $3 billion deal and is expected to relaunch it as a deeply integrated Integrated service for the iTunes Store. So, Shai, what's going on? Okay, uh, what's going on is that Apple and Tidal are trying to get Spotify off its very, very, very high tree, which is the freemium. The uh, people who are using Spotify and not paying anything. Uh, for the music industry, the, uh, that uh, freemium is a big problem because most of the money comes from subscription. Mm -hmm. But uh, Spotify has 60 million users. Mm -hmm. Only 15 of those 60 millions are paying subscription. The other 45 millions are using it for free, which is which means that if Tidal, the Jay Z uh, mm -hmm. streaming company, and if Apple wants to beat Spotify and get that freemium uh, off the way, they'll need to fight. 45 million users. So l let's just remind ourselves exactly what they're fighting against. Here's the video just from you know a few weeks ago. Right now they're writing a story for us. We need to write the story for ourselves. If our fans can see that it's from us, that's what I was finding so important. It's done. This collaboration feels so egoless. Everybody's having a conversation. We really do have an opportunity to change the way we all experience art. We're going to come together and we're going to take a stand and we're going to give people quality and great things and great experiences. You know, we'll, we'll push the things that happen on the internet further along. This is really musicians making music and it's about music and there's no end game. Maybe it sounds like a cliche, but it's about putting art back into the forefront. It's about bringing humanity back to being an artist. Uh, yeah, so that was the yeah. epic video of yeah. Tidal. Noel which... Gallagher uh, gave an interview to Rolling Stone yesterday and he said about this video, who are those people think they are, the Avengers? And it's it kind of looks like everybody thinks that they're going to try and change the music business and the streaming business and be the Avengers of the streaming business. But Spotify, uh, too big to fail right now. What, what do you think, Helen? What would make a new successful service? Well, first of all, it's really important to understand that succeeding in this business is very very hard. Not even Apple with all its might and the iTunes store, not even YouTube with all this, its vast library of music videos, uh, not even they are uh, safe and sure uh, uh, bets in this field. It takes a system that people actually like. People have really unanimously said they hate Tidal. They just don't like it. They don't like the pose behind it, but they also don't like the product itself. They don't like the terms that Tidal is enforcing upon them. Mm -hmm. uh, what they do like is getting stuff for free, and if it's good, and if they're using it, they will consider paying a subscription. That's what Spotify is really proving every mm -hmm. day. And I think uh, Apple is using these kind of uh, mean and dirty tactics because that's the only way they could break Spotify. Okay, I, I'm just imagining a future where Spotify just doesn't break, and that's it. Yeah, yeah that's that's a big possibility. I mean, the, if we if you look uh, about the, if you look at the future of music streaming, uh, the company that is number one at the moment uh, has a very good chance of being number one in two or three years. I mean, uh, the things that uh, both Apple and YouTube have to do to push Spotify away are very extreme, sometimes not really legal, and they will have to compensate people. They will have to give more for and, less. And, and they're risking of making themselves uh, uh, being hated by a lot of people who use Spotify for free. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's, a risky, uh, it's a risky game, but if us consumers uh, will get uh, the advantage of it, so yeah. yay. Okay, we have time for another one last video? We do. Okay, now for our viral video of the week, we know Mario Weinterwoythel. 
Yeah? No. No. Wiener Wien Reuter. Wiener Reuter. As the man behind musicless music videos. But he really wants to show more range. Now entering politics with his new speechless speech format. Poor Putin. Putin. <laughs> Wow, we can watch this for hours. For, yeah, for hours. Uh, show's over. Thank you very much, Shai. Thank you very much, Sharon. Thank you, Jason. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, viewers. We'll be back on Monday with a brand new show of The Tube, Twitter, Tumblr, The Tube 24. And always remember, nothing is more real than nothing. That's Samuel Beckett. Goodbye.